This is the all new 2022 Ford Maverick. And this is a very special vehicle. Not just because it's part of a new category of small pickups. No, it's because this one is mine. That's right, I bought a Ford Maverick. Today we're gonna to take a look at all the features and then take it to our off-road course. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. So you might be asking, where is the 4Runner? Don't worry, I did not trade it in for this. This is an all new edition. Now the 4Runner is back at the office and we'll have plenty of episodes with that in the future. Though it's true you can get a Maverick starting at around $20,000, that is a front wheel drive hybrid that doesn't have a lot of features. This is a fully loaded Lariat. Prices you see it here, 35,715 US dollars. Did I take any manufacturer discounts? Nope, I did not. I paid full retail for this because this is our tester for the next year or so. We'll keep it until something else more interesting comes along. And while we have this for the show, we're gonna take it off-roading, we're gonna load it up with stuff, we're gonna do a lot of things. And there's a lot of DIY stuff you can do with this truck. If you want us to experiment with some DIY stuff, just post a comment below. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this truck. I've never owned a small pickup. I've always had friends that have, but I'm just the idea of them is really cool. And I'm so glad to see that Ford and Hyundai have brought back the segment. A little later, we're gonna hit the freeway and then take it off-roading. But first, let's see what we have here. You will notice this is a crew cab. You can only get it with four doors but I think for the target market that they're going after, that totally makes sense. It is on a 121 inch wheelbase. Uh, so even though it is based on the Bronco Sport, it has a much longer wheelbase. And yeah, this is a unibody. Now, one thing I do like both about the Honda Ridgeline, which is another unibody, but larger truck, as well as the Hyundai Santa Cruz is that they both have a trunk in the bed. This one does not. In the back, we have a four and a half foot box that can take up to 1,500 pounds. The back gate is not damped, but it has a number of cool features. We got bottle openers on both sides. It can also be adjusted so that you can have it just about here and then carry plywood, four by six sheets of plywood. Because this is a Lariat, it has built-in easy to use sliders, although you could always build your own on lower trim models. It also has tie downs. And in the bed, there are locations to put boards to create dividers, which is neat. Now on the sides of the gates here, we have some electrical leads, 12 volt electrical DCs for do-it-yourself projects. And then over there, we have a 400 watt AC power, which is in a sealed receptacle. It's also sprayed with Ford Tough Bed Liner. Yeah, regular entry ones get just bare metal. Don't wanna do that. There is a camera for backing up as well as sensors for parking. And this has the optional tow package, which will add extra cooling to the transmission as well as changes the rear differential. That allows it to tow up to 4,000 pounds. You also get a brake controller integrated in the front. That is key when towing large loads. Still not sure I do full 4,000, but yeah, 3,500, sure. Normally a Lariat comes with 18 inch wheels. However, we have the FX4 package, which downsizes the wheels so I get more sidewall. Now, interesting thing is they say that it comes with all-terrain tires. Not really. These are Scorpions by Pirelli. They are, uh, they're an all season essentially. You can get a Maverick with a hybrid powertrain, but that's only good for front wheel drive. And in fact, that is the standard powertrain for this vehicle. What I have here is the two liter EcoBoost. That's a turbocharged four cylinder that puts out 250 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. And we went with the optional all wheel drive. If you're looking for the best economy, you don't really want to get the turbo because you're looking at 29 miles to the gallon on the highway and 22 in the city. Not great. The hybrid can get you like around 40. So if you want economy, do not get the turbo. <laughs> In the second row, we get a seat that pulls up, so you get extra storage. There's also a Q code in case you want tips on how to use all these little adapters. Uh, 
oh yeah, this is actually pretty comfortable. I have room for my knees, just barely. This is where I would be sitting when driving. I am six foot one, legs torso proportionate, and I do fit, although it is a little bit on the tight side. There's a cutout to give me some more headroom, and uh, I even get a full down armrest with integrated cup holders. Now down here we have a 400 watt max AC power socket, as well as USB, which is USB-C and traditional older style. And then down below that, we have a little bracket hole. Now that bracket hole is for Ford accessories, as well as Ford is gonna release the dimensions for it, so you can 3D print your own accessories. That's pretty cool. Uh, in my knee cutout here, I have a little pocket where I can put my iPad if I want. Yeah, this is pretty nice. If I can get my foot out here. Oh, that's tight. So I bet you're curious what a $35,000 Maverick looks like on the inside. Let's start it up. These seats aren't leather. They're actually synthetic, but they're pretty convincing. They're very soft, really comfortable, actually. Uh, the driver's side has a lot of adjustments. We have power adjustments for up, down, back, forward. I also have uh, lumbar control here, power lumbar. Now the passenger side only has physical control, so you know, passenger doesn't get the same first class accommodations that the driver gets. The luxury continues on the wheel. It is wrapped in leather, although it's pretty low class leather, but if this is what they're saying is leather, fine. Uh, it's nicer than a plastic wheel. That is for certain. Because this is a Lariat with all the options, uh, we're looking at adaptive cruise control as well as lane centering, which we will try a little bit later. When you're spending this much money on a vehicle, you expect it to deliver in terms of features, and this Maverick really does. The main gauge cluster is upgraded on this trim. It's a larger digital display that gives me all the information that I would really want, including all-wheel drive status, off-road information, mileage, whether or not the kids are buckled up, and then I can also go in and modify the safety settings because, of course, this has collision mitigation, blind spot warning, as well as parking alerts. Over on the right here, we have an eight inch infotainment screen. And to be honest, it doesn't do a lot. This is using Sync 3, which is the older Sync system, but it provides the functionality that I personally want. It'll support a number of sources, including AM, FM, terrestrial radios, as well as Sirius XM and Bluetooth through my phone. Uh, speaking of phone, I can add phone for Bluetooth pairing. And then over here we have settings, including uh, sound configuration. This does have the upgraded BO sound system. Uh, Bang & Olufsen's kind of entry-level sound setup. You can do different sound modes. Surround and sa surround sounds a little weird with music, so I'm just going to keep it on stereo. And then this, of course, also doubles as a backup camera. And that's a pretty decent backup camera. Uh, because I also have the parking sensors on here, it'll notify me if something's too close right there. Go back to park. This does come with a wireless charging pad. However, it does not have wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. You have to use a cable. Now, that's really more useful if you're do doing Bluetooth audio, uh, but you know, you just place it right there and it'll start charging. But if you want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're gonna have to plug in. And they provide you both a USB-C as well as an older style USB plug and boom, Apple CarPlay. Now, the one nice thing about wired CarPlay is it always works. We've been getting some really sketchy experience with um, wireless CarPlay and a number of the new devices. This one, you know it's just gonna work. There's not gonna be any issues. It's very straight up and it works just fine. This is about, I would say this is pretty much on par with the screen in my Forerunner. It's basic, straightforward. The colors are nice, resolution's okay. I like it. I think it's nicely placed. Um, I have a cubby here for my action figures, I guess. <laughs> and then another cubby here. In fact, they just have so many cubbies here. I mean, I can put my phone down here, both propped up as well as on the charging pad. I have another cubby in front of that. I have cup holders. I have yet another cubby. And then I have yet another cubby that has a little pullout bit in case I get any gunk on there. I guess that'd be good for coins. Overall feelings of this interior, the colors are actually pretty nice. I don't know if normally I would go with this kind of bluish tint. Um, I do like the fact that they use carbon fiber waste uh, integrated in the dashboard, so that reduces uh, landfill waste. 
it and it kind of creates a cool kind of very purposeful effect now overall I, I like this interior it's not something i would normally pick but i think on this truck it actually really works and i especially am thankful for having aircon all be uh physical switch gear and it's not just on off aircon this is actually pretty fancy in the fact that it's a temperature controlled dual system i can control temperature here and here independently or i can link them together further the seats have three stages of heat as does the steering wheel and if i use remote start i can set that to operate the vehicle for up to 15 minutes so it can warm up before i go on a cold day i even like these door pulls the exposed rivets i mean there's just a lot of kind of cool very unique ideas here it's kind of like they just said let's start from scratch and see where we go i even have a little control here for my tiny little window in the back that's a lariat exclusive steering wheel in out up down that's good lots of adjustments I get uh oh, okay the visor moves around and do i get a light here oh i get a light on the visor does the passenger a light passenger gets a light too and i also have an eyeglass holder okay this seems like a pretty nice setup but how is it going the distance i'm now going to drive this an hour and a half out to our test site to see a how comfortable it is on the freeway how well the adaptive cruise control systems work and we're also going to do a zero to 60 and we're gonna then test the off-road features all in this one review. I got a long day ahead of me, so uh, let's buckle up and head on out. It was back in 2018 when Ford announced that they were going to just cancel all of their sedans. A lot of people thought they were kind of crazy but Ford knew one thing nobody else did, that the Maverick was coming. So I do wanna point out that a lot of the stuff that you're gonna see on this Lariat isn't available in the lower trims. Of course, some things like collision mitigation are available across the lineup. However, on this one, we don't just get adaptive cruise control, we also get lane tracing. Let me show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit set, set my target speed at 70 here. So I'm just gonna set it to 70. And when the wheel goes green, that means it's steering for me. Now this is not an autonomous system. This is a system that's designed to reduce fatigue of the driver. And by removing all my little micro movements, I'd say it's gonna do a good job. And yeah, it wants me to put my hands back on the wheel because it's a level two system, which means that the driver needs to be re-engaged at a moment's notice, just like that but it does a really good job. Not only will it pace the vehicle in front of me, matching its speed uh, up into my target speed, but it will also drive down the middle of the lane. And it uses a combination of radars and cameras to make that all possible. On the freeway here, it's actually really quiet. And part of that is due to the fact that the front windshield has an acoustic laminate on it. So it actually makes the cabin quieter. Now it's interesting, when you buy the FX4 package, Ford actually swaps out two of your drive modes for the off-road modes. What I gain is of course mud, rut, and sand. What I lose is a sport mode and an eco mode. I guess they figure if you're into off-roading, you don't really care about eco mode. So in normal mode, the vehicle drives like you would expect. It's really quiet, it's so composed. If you've driven any truck with leaf springs on the back, this is a revelation <laughs> to be able to drive a trucklet that actually feels like a car and yeah i mean it kind of is a throwback to the baja from subaru but you can go even further back to like the el camino this thing it offers a lot of the flexibility of a truck but it drives just like a crossover and because this has a longer wheelbase than the bronco sport it's based on it actually tracks really nice let's try it zero to 60. Uh, we don't have a sport mode because this is an FX4, so we're just going to keep it in normal. Going to preload the turbo just slightly. Three, two, one, go. Whoa! Holy! This thing's quick! 6.75 seconds! That's pretty good. Now, not all Mavericks are gonna have the same zero to 60 time, and that's because this has the tow package, it has a different final drive. 
Uh, and that is going to change both the way that it feels as well as the zero to 60 performance. Unfortunately, I don't have one of the other ones available, so this is with the tow package. But will it impress me as much off-road? Well, let's head out to the test site and find out. I've now been driving for a little more than an hour, and I have to say, this Maverick is really a great road trip car. I don't know if it's because of the slightly longer wheelbase or what, but it's just, it's even more comfortable than the Bronco Sport, which I like the Bronco Sport, but I didn't fall in love with it. But this car, I really like it. I reset the trip computer on this after I got over uh, Snoqualmie Pass because I didn't think it would be fair to calculate um, fuel mileage on a massive incline. So we've been going kind of mostly level with some ups and some downs, and I'm averaging 32.6 miles to the gallon with a 250 horsepower two liter turbo. How cool is that? So for people who are considering this Maverick, not necessarily as a truck, although they will use the truck bed from time uh, to time, but really just as a vehicle, as a car, it really is a good one. It's comfortable, it works well, everything falls to hand. Um, visibility is quite good. And then of course you get the bonus truck bed. This vehicle is a great do everything vehicle. Now compared to the Santa Cruz, which we did a review of just recently, this vehicle is not as fast in zero to 60. However, this is faster than the Ranger in zero to 60. Also, the Santa Cruz has a higher rated tow capability of 5,000 pounds. This has a maximum rating of 4,000 pounds. I wouldn't really tow more than say 3,500 pounds probably with either of them, uh, but that's just me. As a car, this is great, but how good is it off-road? Now, we're not gonna go super extreme here because this is day one. I literally picked this car up at the dealership last night, but we wanna see what the system will do. How does this all-wheel drive system respond using the various off-road modes? And then we'll take what we learned from this to then plan future episodes. Because we don't wanna like throw this into something that's impossible for it, uh, but we do wanna have some fun and we wanna take you along for the ride. The FX4 package includes Scorpion ATR tires. Now they kind of call them all terrains and they kind of are, but if you look at the tread pattern, you can clearly see they're primarily intended as all seasons. Out here at our private test facility, we have a number of roads. Today, we're gonna test just a couple things. We're gonna test the hill descent control system and we're also gonna take this up the Sidewinder. Now it does have 8.6 inches of ground clearance, which should be plenty for Sidewinder. Although there are these little flaps on the sides of the wheels, it kind of like arrow, little arrow dams in front that I'm a little concerned with. Uh, but we should give this all-wheel drive system a real workout. The first thing we're testing is hill descent control system. How does it work? Put it in the hill descent control system. It says hill descent control ready. I'm going to use brake and throttle to adjust the descent speed from 2 to 20 miles per hour within that range. Definitely not doing 20. <laughs> so as I release at two miles per hour, it should kind of hold it at around there. We're doing three, let's see if I can get it down to two. Oh, and I also have a screen here which can show that I'm currently at a 11 degree decline. Oh, and since I put my foot on the brake, I have auto brake hold on as well. Let's go ahead and turn that off so it doesn't keep stopping us completely when I'm just trying to go slow. So let's try to hold it at two miles per hour, 12 degrees, and see if it holds it holding it at three. I can't seem to get it to go slower than three. Yeah, it just kind of wants to do three miles per hour. I always prefer about one and a half for this. Oop, I'm going to put foot brake on because we don't want to hit these even at three. I'm afraid about the nose digging in. We're at 16 degrees. And down we go. So the hill descent control system does work. I just really wish I had more flexibility in the way that it did function. 
The documentation says it will go from 2 to 20 miles per hour. I couldn't get it to go even 3 consistently. It kind of was hovering between 3 and 4. Uh, so, you know, a little bit more control there would have been nice. Now it's the time you've been waiting for. We're going to put this all-wheel drive system to the test. It's also going to test the breakover and approach angles. Uh, Ford says that this has 8.6 inches of ground clearance. It doesn't look like it from the outside, but we're going to uh, trust them on that because you need about 8.5 inches of ground clearance to get over our log crossing. This will be fun. Oh, a front camera would be nice. Okay, there we go. So this is based on the Bronco Sport, and a lot of people confuse the Bronco Sport with the full-size Bronco. The full-size Bronco has a four-wheel drive system with a transfer case that is critically important. That will physically lock the front to the back wheels. This system and the Bronco Sport employ a clutch pack based system where it uses a multi-plate clutch in between the front and the back to put power to the back wheels as it needs it. It is a computer controlled uh, system that will engage and disengage as necessary, but it's never a full lock. So there are two Bronco Sport all-wheel drive systems. The one we tested most recently against the Subaru Crosstrek uh, was the version with their high end all-wheel drive system. That one is a clutch pack also in the middle, but it uses twin clutches in the back to help lock those two wheels together. The all-wheel drive system in this Maverick is the same all-wheel drive system you would find in the entry-level Bronco Sport all-wheel drive, in that it has the clutch pack, but it does not have the twin clutches to lock the back wheels together. Uh, so we are going to rely solely on wheel braking uh, via the control programs. Because this is the FX4, it has mud ruts, and sand. The major difference between the two is that mud ruts will try to minimize uh, wheel slip and sand basically encourages more wheel slip. So with this one um, I'm in, let's see where am I now? Okay I'm in mud ruts and it's going to use individual wheels to kind of stop wheels from spinning which will then redistribute power back into the system uh, theoretically to the wheels that have grip and let's give it a try. The Santa Cruz got through this okay, but it did kind of have a bit of a struggle. You should go watch that episode if you want to see that. Uh, these tires are barely all terrains, if you could call them that at all. So right now we're going over the crosscut, and the crosscut removes traction from the front left, back right wheels as we're going over, which means it's a challenging situation and is it how is this doing it doesn't seem like we're making much progress there so I'm gonna rewind a little bit did you know R stands for rewind <laughs> it doesn't and we use a little momentum through here try to get over the hump and there we go it's probably lifting that wheel super high now you won't see that wheel lifting so high on the Ranger because the Ranger is a body on frame truck with more articulation this being a crossover based platform means that it just doesn't have a lot of articulation so it's going to lift those wheels. And the problem with that is that you can't reach down and grab dirt to move the vehicle forward. Ah, this is exactly where the Santa Cruz struggled. In fact, I'm kind of in a ditch that was dug by the Santa Cruz. Ah, can this get over? Oh, 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 just keep the throttle in. The all wheel drive system is figuring it out. Oh, it does it. It does it. Is it going to do it? Oh. Ooh, ooh, that's that's a lot of sound. I'm on something. I got to go take a look at this. Oh, where am I? Ah, plastic. Got to love plastic flaps. They're always a problem. So, let's uh, move over and get up on the rock. if we can uh, reverse here. If not, we're going to be adding some rocks to the course. Okay, so now I want to try to get over more left so I can put that wheel up on a rock that I have over there. Oop. How are we doing here? Oh, I'm kind of glad this is my truck and not Ford's. If you know what I mean? Okay, so now we're going to go to the left and try to get our wheel up on the rock to help with alignment. 
There we go. There we go. We're going to get over that now. Come on, come on. You got it. You got it. All oh, those little plastic flaps. Oh, man. We are riding the struggle bus. Come on, you going to get it? I don't want to rotate too far, and I don't want to, like, totally shred my tires. So let's uh, send it. Oof. Well, the getting dirty and away we go gonna have to use some momentum to get over it oof yeah we did it <laughs> Ooh, not ideal okay now we just have a steep climb up the grass and i can really see on this all-wheel drive system that it is pushing a lot of power to the back in fact, it's saying it's doing more than the front, but that can't be right. It must be a percentage of total possible. Just crawling along and we're doing good. So the all-wheel drive system, oh wait, we're not out of this yet. I now have to charge through here because nothing makes it through this. Come on, floor it, 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 floor it. Ah, and we made it through. Now to be completely straightforward, that all-wheel drive performance wasn't the best. I really wish that they would offer the twin clutch rear that you get in the top end Bronco Sport with this vehicle, but they don't. So we use what we got. And I think that we're still going to have a lot of fun with this. I'm definitely looking forward to doing some trail drives. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're obviously going to have to temper our expectations uh, because this is not an extreme vehicle. It is a pretty basic all wheel drive system with some extra fancy electronics on top of it. But you definitely want to subscribe to see what we do with this vehicle next. Uh, first things first, I think we need to get some proper all-terrains on it. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share this video. We make them for you, and we hope you enjoy them. Until next time, drive safe.